All right. Uh, I'm going to do the uh, the other pork chop again today, uh, Chinese style, if you like, with the soy sauce and the um, soy sauce and oyster sauce. Uh, I'm going to have that with some rice. Um, the last time I made the rice, I did uh, two two ramekins of rice and then one of uh, water. No, I didn't. I did the opposite of that. I did one rice and uh, two water. So one rice and two water. And then I boiled it until the water disappeared. Uh, and then it's done. Uh, I'll do, I'll do, I did that on the smoked haddock uh, with melted cheese one. But this time I'll do it slightly differently. So, um, I will, uh, I'll start the same in that I will uh, wash the rice just the same. Maybe we don't need to even wash it quite so much this time. But rather than putting one rice and two two cups of water in, I'm going to put too much water in. I'm going to boil it and then I'm going to drain it, put it through a colander. Um, I'll put some ginger in it again, uh, just because I've got plenty. So this method will dilute the ginger a wee bit. Some of the goodness from the ginger will go down the uh, go down the sink, but it's okay. And we have to keep an eye on this, otherwise it'll overcook. With the uh, if you put double the water into rice, once the water disappears, it's done. It kind of is a built-in timer if you like. It tells you that it's done. So obviously you have to remember to turn it off. Uh, but with this one, you just have to keep an eye on it, and otherwise it'll overcook and the rice will kind of split. You know, sometimes like you see rice in soups, and it's kind of burst open, it's kind of broken, which we don't want. So, um, so my cousin normally does it this way, and uh, he wouldn't really wash it. He not normally soaks it, just just leaves it to soak for a wee while, while he does that, does other bits. But I want to. Because of how I'm going to cook the, the the pork, I need to crack on. I need to get this on as soon as possible. So I think we'll call that washed. Maybe it'll use a wee bit less water actually. So we should call that down. It doesn't have to be 100% because uh, it's going to be using a lot more water than than is needed. So I don't care, I'm not measuring it, I'm just putting in, I'm just putting in plenty. It's probably a bit too much, but that yeah, was okay. So turn that on. And same with the salt, the salt's going to get a bit diluted, so you want to put a fair amount of salt into it. So this this uh, this recipe, I think I'm just going to do almost identical to the pork chop, to the tomato pork chop. Uh, I'm going to do it identical to the tomato pork chop, just a different sauce. So rather than using the uh, ketchup puree and uh, balsamic, I'm going to do it almost exactly the same way. But use the oyster sauce and soy sauce, maybe some rice wine as well. So, I uh, don't have that much ginger actually, so uh, I'll lead on that. Uh, yeah, I will put some ginger in it because this is maybe a little bit old. So the last time I fried the I fried the whole pork chop and then uh, I took it out and then I fried the vegetables. I'm going to do it um, 
slightly differently this time because I after I did that I put a chopped I chopped the chop up uh, so what I'll do this time is it'll be more kind of like just like a stir fry I should have chopped a load of this because I'm going to do more so just roughly chop some ginger up shall uh the cooker I shall drop some of this in just boil it up in the rice see the other way when you do two to one uh, you can put spices and things in it and then they'll cook right down into the uh, into the rice whereas this way you're going to pour a lot of this water off so uh, yeah you couldn't really season it with spices the same way um, while I've got the ginger here so what, rather than searing off the chop then chopping it up and then throwing it in. I'm just going to chop it all up into wee pieces and then treat it just like a stir fry. I'm just going to fry up everything at the same time. for the raw meat. When I do um, things like this I quite like the meat quite small because if you do the if you do the meat quite big the first thing that you do with it is you when, when you when you come to eat it the first thing that you do with a big piece of meat is, is you know break it in half and then you've got a big surface area with no sauce on it so whenever I'm doing stir fries or, or curries or basically any kind of dish that's got meat through it I like the meat is to be quite small like that because then you get more sauce around it and it tastes better so should I be a wee bit early but him yeah, I'll turn that to medium and just get a wee bit of heat into it. So you can see that I've used a, uh, a separate board and a separate knife for dealing with the raw meat. And just cleaning that up. So there's certain things when it comes to hygiene. There's certain things I'm not too worried about, um, but there are certain things that you do kind of make an effort for. So like this chopping board here, uh, this block never gets used for raw vegetables. No, it never gets used for raw meat or raw fish or anything like that. So it's just just vegetables. Not even fruit because I chop a lot of garlic on this and if I was to, uh, even if you clean it, the garlic's kind of impregnated into it. So uh, it does tend to, everything tastes of garlic that you do on this board so I wouldn't do fruit or anything on it. Uh, that last portion I did was quite big so I'll do a wee bit smaller this time, just a wee bit less. You could use a, you could use a normal onions as well. Just happen to have the spring onions. And you don't have to be technical at all. Uh, we just. Let's just go for it, let's get it going. You can basically just uh, throw everything in at the same time. Good bit of oil. Okay, 
Oh, I don't have very much garlic. No. I should have. Uh, no. It's Easter Sunday, so maybe the shops are shut. Maybe that's my excuse. Said before, I'm not not because I don't want the heat. It's just it's just not very nice eating chili seeds. So you could obviously put any other vegetables through this that you want. Any soft vegetables, your courgettes, and uh, yeah, keep an eye on the rice and make sure it doesn't overboil. Otherwise, it's a right fucking mess. chopping board might have a, a bow in it. So I've done this a few times now when I do this it's not cutting all the way through. But yeah it seems to rock it's it's rocking a bit. I think my chopping board goes like that. I need to I need to give it a good sand. Just freaking level out a wee bit. Uh, I will put tomatoes into it. Um, I would really actually rather more garlic than that one tiny wee clove. I would normally put two big cloves into it. Especially with this sauce that we're going to make, which is really strong. It's quite a powerful sauce. And what makes it really good is the, uh, is the strong garlic. This is simplified <clears throat> a wee bit and I've just put the pork in at the beginning. <coughs> Those chilies are catching a bit. double that even three times the amount of garlic just haven't been to the shops for a couple of days that's all it is that'll be okay the liquids I'm going to use uh, I'm going to deglaze it with rice wine can't seem to get that right uh, deglaze it with rice wine I'm going to try my light soy sauce for the stir fry and the oyster sauce we'll call it that. 
Just, just fry everything up. Get a wee bit of colour onto it. Just put the heat up to maximum. Yeah. So that's the other thing we're doing rice this way. You, you, uh, you dirty something else. Put a dirty the colander as well. So at this point we could just be doing the tomato option and um, I know I've done the pork chop slightly differently but uh, see as well with with uh, when it comes to hygiene certain things I'm not bothered about like putting pots of rice or potatoes straight into the straight into the fridge but this this uh, spoon has touched the raw pork when I put this in so I'm going to give this a clean just now uh, just because it touched raw pork when I first put the raw pork in and I first gave it a stir just give that a clean there's certain things that I'm a bit funny about but there's certain things I just don't care about like washing vegetables I just I never really bother so I'm not going to put any salt in because there's a lot of salt in both of these so we'll deglaze it with the in both the soy sauce and the oyster sauce Deglazing. And it's all quite flexible, the amount of water you put in and stuff, it doesn't really matter uh, because it's all going to reduce down. It's a good glug of soy sauce. Decent dollop of uh, oyster sauce. You can do with another one of them as well. And so I haven't put the garlic in yet. I'm not a big fan of frying the garlic in the beginning. I like to put the garlic in after I put the sauce in, after I kind of create the sauce, uh, whether it's tomato or whether it's this. Because I th just think that putting the uh, the garlic in at this point gives it a lot more power, a lot more strength, adds a lot more strength to the uh, to the sauce. And the smell of that once the garlic hits that oyster sauce and soy sauce, it's really really good. And that will reduce down now into a, quite a rich and intense thick sauce. Mm. I mean, at the moment, it's really strong. It's really good. Mm. That's lovely. That guy, there's just there is enough garlic there actually. So yes, yeah, so, I mean, first impression is the light soy sauce is uh, is fine. I, I kind of just questioning now whether I what why I actually need dark soy sauce because. Uh, um, I think I can do everything, stir fries, dipping, soups with light soy sauce, but you just wouldn't really use dark soy sauce in a soup or really pour it over rice or something uh, because it's, um, it's a bit strong, it's a bit too dark to, for the, uh, a bit too dark for soups and pouring over rice, but uh, so therefore I probably, I'm just going to run that down 
and I will not bother buying dark soy sauce again I think because this tastes absolutely lovely with just the white. Mm, really good. So this rice is probably about done now. Yeah it's very very much done I think. So I'll dump this through the colander. So it looks very fluffy and stuff so and I think what we would do is I think the idea is we'll clean this out. I never really do it this way, but uh, I think the idea is get ourselves a hot plate as well if we do this. Just do that. Stick a plate on it, and that will just that will sit there, and that should be good. Just let it steam for the last minute, and let it dry out, and then basically this is. Pretty much done. Don't need any more water. So, a few things to get. I'll just leave them out there. It just reminds me to. Uh, it reminds me I need to get some more. A bit of pepper in actually, but not salt. Don't need. Don't need any salt in this. I didn't even bother salting the the meat uh, in the beginning because. The sauce itself is so salty. It's just a bit of parsley. Uh, just because you always want to try and any excuse, you know. And uh, if I had more parsley than that, I would be putting it in. Don't skimp. Yeah, that's looking really good. See how it's getting thicker now. So the more you reduce it, the, the thicker it gets. And the reducing it's just sticking the heat onto full and letting it bubble like that, and all the evaporation it reduces down and it richens it, intensifies it, all the water comes off it. it smells looking lovely. So I'll turn that off now and uh, Could have probably put that lid on top of the colander, but uh, okay, we'll call that done, I think. Oh, I'm going to use that. <laughs> I did that. I did that slightly wrong, but uh, that's okay. This up a wee bit. So what I'll do with this is I will just uh, I'll just leave it there. Um, I'll just leave it there like that, basically till I eat this until I finish. Then I'll scoop it into a container and then get it into the fridge kind of as soon as possible. Um, because yeah, like we've discussed before, I'm going to reheat that rice over the next couple of days. So I've made the rice for today, but I've got nothing else at the moment. To have with rice. I've only got this, this was my second and final fourth chop. So I don't know what I'm going to have for my dinners over the next couple of days. Didn't, didn't actually need that. Uh, but I know that I'm going to have, whatever I'm going to have, I'm going to have it with rice. So whenever I go to the supermarket, I'm going to be thinking, right, I've got a couple of portions of rice there. What can I buy with it? I did reduce that maybe a wee bit too much, but. Uh, if you reduce it too much, you can just add a bit, of w bit more water and start again. Um, so there's not much sauce with it, but what it means is, is that it, it's very, it's still going to be quite rich and intense. So you, the, the more sauce you've got, the less rich it is. The less, I mean, there's virtually no sauce in that now, but uh, that's going to be 
all coated in nice and strong flavour around the meat. Just, uh, as usual, create a plate of food and a clean kitchen. But that's just exactly the same, same idea as the um, as the tomato pork chop. It's just a different a different sauce. But exactly the same vegetables. I know I did the method slightly differently because I did the whole pork chop the last time, but uh, I could do the same uh, method, but just varying the uh, that sauce. And if you get if you can get to the Chinese supermarket and you can get those kind of soy sauces, and you can get the uh, the Lee Kum Kee Panda brand oyster sauce, it's really 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 good. So there you go. That's a Chinese style pork chop, vegetables, boiled rice. Two more portions of boiled rice, even though you're not supposed to reheat rice, but get it into the fridge as quick as possible. Within an hour, that should be in the fridge. As I've said before, if I happen to leave that out overnight, I wouldn't eat it. Uh, I would, I would just bin it. So get it in the fridge within an hour, and then you can reheat it just by microwaving it over the next couple of days, and it's fine. Uh, and that's done. The combination of those uh, sauces, the uh, rice wine, the Lee Kum Kee Panda brand oyster sauce, and the soy sauce, <coughs> is uh, and garlic. Putting the garlic in when it's when you after you've put the liquids in, really really good, really strong. Any stir fry, basically any stir fry of vegetables or any meats or anything, will benefit from that. It's a really rich, strong sauce. Really really good.